Bluetooth devices are everywhere, but they're not as simple to connect to or hack as a Wi-Fi device might be. To solve this, we'll take a look at a module of BetterCap that allows us to scan for and even query the services on Bluetooth devices on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. BetterCap, the successor to EtherCap, comes with a lot of powerful Wi-Fi hacking tools. Along with those tools also comes a number of Bluetooth hacking tools. And although we can't use the exact same vulnerabilities that we use on Wi-Fi with Bluetooth, there are a lot of similarities which make these modules useful. For one, they both use the 2.4 GHz band, which means that they are relying on the same general wavelength in order to communicate. But because the protocols are different, we'll need to use a different system in order to identify them, and we won't be able to do things like try to hack into them or get them to automatically connect to us, unfortunately. Instead, we will be able to dig into nearby Bluetooth devices to learn things like the model number of the phone, the current battery percentage, and even be able to write some data to the Bluetooth device. Now, in order to do this, we'll need to install Kali Linux because it comes pre-installed on Kali Linux, and we'll also need to install the Go language if we're installing this on some other Linux distro. So if you're trying to install this on Ubuntu, then you might have to run through a bunch of installation steps, which I'll try to explain a little bit more in the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Now, as soon as you have BetterCap installed and you have a Bluetooth device ready to try to scan and connect to, then we can begin. To get started, let's take a look at the BetterCap GitHub page here so we can learn a little bit more about it. As you can see, this is a Swiss Army knife for 80211 Bluetooth Low Energy and Ethernet Networks, and it specializes in reconnaissance and man in the middle attacks. Now there is definitely a lot here, and as you can see, the installation mostly requires that you have a correctly configured Go environment, which they don't really go on to say what that means, uh, but uh, you can also go ahead and install it via this command line, a uh, series of instructions, but I'm just going to do it in the most basic way. Uh, and perhaps you have installed Kali Linux Lite and you don't have everything um, that comes with it in a regular instance. So you can just do apt install, well first, apt update. And then once it's done updating, you can do apt install better cap. Now it's important to do the update because otherwise you might end up missing a bunch of packages that haven't been updated in a while in the repository of uh, libraries that you're working with. So again, make sure that first before you install this, you run an update like this. Okay, there we go. That took a very long time and I have no idea why, but now that our packages are updated, we can just type apt install better cap. And that should go ahead and install everything that we need in order to get this running. Now, if you're running on Ubuntu or something like that, you're probably not going to be able to find this. So you'll need to make sure that you have the Kali um, sources installed because otherwise it won't know where to go ahead and find all these packages. Now, I don't know why this is saying it's installing because I clearly already have BetterCap installed. But uh, once this finishes installing for you, you should be able to simply type BetterCap in order to get started Although once you do, you're gonna notice that it's a little counterintuitive. You're not just adding flags to open it. It, it kind of drops you in a menu system. And if you don't know the commands that it can be a little confusing to know exactly what to do. So let's take a look at some of the commands that we can use specific to Bluetooth low energy in BetterCap so we can get a better understanding of what it is we'll need to do when we have it open. So here you can see we have a couple basic commands. The first being uh, Bluetooth low energy recon on which will begin basically scanning for different devices. And this can get pretty dramatic if devices around us are using MAC address randomization because it'll show a lot more devices than there actually are. We can also go ahead and switch that off when we're done scanning. We can clear if we need to do a new scan, and then we can type show if we want to see all the devices we discovered in that scan, along with some extra information. Now, if we find one that's interesting, we can use a Bluetooth low energy enumerate which basically scans the device and gives us all the information we can learn about it, usually including the model number of the phone, if it is in fact a phone that we're scanning. Now we can also write some data to the device, but I haven't really gone too much into this, so I'm not gonna go over that today. Instead, I'm gonna show you some more interesting things you can do with doing things like sorting um, the devices that you've discovered so you can distinguish the ones that are closest to you by signal strength. So let's go back to our terminal window, and what I'm gonna look at is, uh, well, I reached timeout, but it doesn't matter. What happens when I just type better cap? 
So because there are not going to be as many devices around as there were when I did the scan earlier, I want to show you an earlier scan and tell you a little bit about what these results mean, because we're definitely not going to get the same amount of uh, results as we will when I did the scan earlier. So if we just type help, then we should see a list of all the modules that are running on EdderCap, of which by default, there will only be two, which is the event stream and the net recon. So to get things going, we can first type uh, Bluetooth Low Energy Recon on, and you can see it'll begin streaming. And while not all of these devices are being identified, you can see that this one was identified as an Apple. Uh, this was discovered as a Versa, so it has a network name associated with it. And then we can see there was a Tile device, which is an anti-theft device uh, that basically always keeps the same MAC address and has a network name of Tile so that we know that if we see one, hey, this is an anti-theft device, if I have a tile, then I can report it to the app and whoever this is can find their keys or whatever it's attached to. Now you can see there's some, um, looks like a sound system, probably someone's headphones and some other things we found. So this is what you can expect to see when you run a scan in a busy area. Now, of course, we're not in a busy area. So let's go ahead and run a scan now and see what we can find. So right off the bat, we can see that <laughs> it's already trying to discover things on my network, even though I did not ask it to. Thank you very much. So I'm going to run our first command which is just Bluetooth Low Energy Recon. Mm. Let's do first BLE Recon on. Make sure that, wi that Bluetooth is turned on. Let's try that now. There we go. So now we have our Bluetooth recon powered on. No idea why it took a minute to do that, but it's now working. So this will begin to start looking for Bluetooth devices in range and tell us a little bit of information if we can find it. Now here we can see we've actually identified a Samsung TV, which is probably pretty far because that, that is not mine. So it's probably in a neighbor's place, but this is the level of information we can start to pull in about the individual devices that we're detecting with this scan. Now I'll let it run for a little bit longer because I wanna drop some more information, but we'll probably end up using this Bluetooth TV as a source for us to go a little bit more into depth about the device. So to stop the scan, I can just type BLE recon off. Now we've stopped the scan and in order to show the results, I can type BLE show. Now here you can see that we've got a lot of information about a particular device that we've found. Uh, in this case, it is a Apple device. So to learn more about this, let's go ahead and take the MAC address and we'll use the enum feature to attempt to scan this device a little further. So if I type BLE enum and then paste in the MAC address here, there we go. We can see that this is an iPhone 11. Uh, model 2. We can read a little bit more information about how we can write to this device, what the current battery level is, um, and all this information could be incredibly useful if we maybe find a flaw in the Bluetooth technology that allows us to connect to the device. Now, the fact that we can not only discover this device, but then start pulling manufacturer information is really interesting because it means that we can go a little bit further than simply, you know, just kind of looking at a device and passively seeing it's nearby. And instead we can start to scan to see, hmm, are there any maybe apps that are running Bluetooth services? Is there anything in the firmware update that we could abuse? This really gives us more information because once we find something we can write to, as you can see here, if we know a little bit more about the system, we can start writing values that might actually mess with the device. BetterCap is an amazing tool for getting started hacking wireless networks, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. In general, there are a lot of differences with the way that Bluetooth works. And one of them we might experience when scanning is finding a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices when there's actually only a couple in the room. Now this is because a lot of Bluetooth devices are programmed to randomize their MAC address in order to prevent them from being tracked. And while this isn't the case with devices like maybe a tile, which would have a consistent MAC address all the time so it can be tracked, because that's the purpose of the design, many other devices will periodically randomize their MAC address and create the illusion that there are a whole bunch of ones uh, in range. Now, if you see this, you can generally also identify it by seeing that there's no manufacturer listed after it, because since it's just putting up random MAC addresses, it's not really going to trace back to a particular manufacturer. 
That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.